Hello, welcome to episode 45 of live.withcode.uk. This week we're continuing the theme of um, understanding turtle graphics um, so that we can load a grayscale image in um, and display each of the pixels um, in a, a varying shade from black to white. So yesterday at Fulford um, it was Pride Day, so we all had a non-uniform day dressing up in rainbow colours. Um, and we celebrated the life of Alan Turing, um, so the famous code breaker. Uh, so this week's challenge will load an image of Alan Turing's face in grayscale, black to white and grey and anything in between, um, and it will display each of those pixels at, as coloured dots using the turtle module. Now it's not the most efficient of programs. If you wanted to actually display an image, you wouldn't use turtle graphics, but the whole point of this mini series is to boost your confidence with turtle graphics. So we'll stick with it for now. Um, so if you want to make this work with any image of your choice, I'll put a link in the description at the end of this video, I'll show you how you can generate the image data to make it work. But for now, um, let's have a look and see where we start from. So I've got all the image data here for all of the pixels. So a zero here would be black, as in light completely switched off, and a 255 would be perfect white, as in light fully switched on. The program needs to load through all of those and then display a pixel, um, a circle in that color. So it's live coding. You'll hopefully see the evolution of the code um, from start to finish. First of all, we need to load the image data. So let's um, make a procedure or a function because um, it's going to return a value called load image. We want to be able to load multiple files at some point in the future. So we'll allow it to accept a parameter so that we can say load from image or load from image two or whatever. Then we want to open that file. So we'll open the file and store the file object so that we can close it again afterwards and free up all of the system resources. Between opening and closing, we want to read everything and store that. Let's go for file contents. That's going to be one big long string that um, contains everything that we want to process. So let's just display that for now. Um, nothing happens yet because we've defined the function, but we've never called it. So load image uh, image.txt. There we go. Now it calls load image and it displays all of this. Rather than displaying it, I would like to return the image data. Now we haven't got anything for image yet, so let's make something. And the image data is going to be a two dimensional list, a list containing lists. So it's going to be like if this was a, a two by two image, it would be something like this, where this means light switched on, light switched off. Sorry, light switched on, light switched on, light switched off, light switched off. That would be a, a two dimensional list, a two by two image. I want to put all of the um, image data in from this file. So first of all, we need to load each line. Um, so we'll split the whole string up, file contents dot um, split, every time we have a new line. So we'll say lines equal. So lines is going to be um, a list containing each of the lines separately. Then we can process each line separately. So let's comment as we go. Um, then we want to split each pixel. So for each line in our list of lines, um, let's split that up. Now this isn't a CSV file, it's not got commas in between the values, it's got spaces between the values. So let's split it every time we have a space this time. Uh, and then we can say columns. Um, so that now, columns is going to be a list containing each of those numbers separately. But notice the quotation marks here. Because we've read from a file, these are strings, not integers. What we need to do is iterate through each of those. So for um, pixel in columns, um, we need to convert that to an integer number. Um, so pixel will be a string. Let's convert it to an integer and then add it to a list. So um, let's make a list. So row of pixels is going to be an empty list to begin with. Let's add an individual pixel to that list, row of 
pixels.pen. So we'll add in that number. Remember, zero means black, 255 means white. Um, and then, um, what's happening here now? So for each row, we want a blank list for every row. And then once we've processed that row, we can add that to our image data. So image.append row of pixels. Um, all right. So at this point, we've got an error because, where is it, line 17? We're trying to convert something to an integer that can't be converted to an integer. So I suspect that this is happening because at the end of our pixel data, we've got a trailing um, space on here. So that means we're trying to convert just a space to an integer number, which we can't do. Um, so how can we do this instead? Let's see. The line here is the thing that has some trailing white space on the end. If we strip off all of that trailing white space before we split it, we shouldn't have a problem. OK, let's display this and see if it looks vaguely right. Yeah, we've got a two dimensional list. So a list containing a list of 32 numbers. And then the 2D list contains another 1D list containing 32 numbers. And it does that 32 times. So it's a 32 by 32 list. All right, so let's store that. Um, and then it would be nice if we can display it. Um, so in order to do the displaying, we'll need to import turtle graphics, make a T, a turtle object, so that we can do some drawing. Um, turtle dot turtle with a capital letter. Um, and I'd like to be able to do something like draw image, but I haven't defined draw yet. So let's give that a try. Um, let's define draw. I need to know the image data as a parameter. Um, OK, now that image data is a 2D list. So we should be able to loop through every row in the image data. And then within the row, we should be able to loop through each column in that row. And then we should be able to, I don't know, plot that um, uh, um, a circle, a pixel, let's say draw pixel rather than plot. OK, so to draw, we need to kind of know the X and the Y coordinates as well as the color. So the column and the color, I suppose, is a bit ambiguous, but it works. It represents both. Um, but we don't know what the X and Y coordinates are yet, and we don't know how to draw a pixel. Let's focus on the X and Y first. Um, let's say X is zero and Y is zero, and we'll do the actual calculations later. Now we want to be able to draw an individual pixel. So draw pixel. Let's define that procedure. We need to know the X coordinate, the Y coordinate and the color. Um, and then we can teleport. So we'll go to the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. We'll draw a circle. Um, and we need to set the color. It's spelled the American way because it's built into Python. Um, we need to say t dot begin fill, draw the circle, and t dot end fill. OK, will this work? Probably not, because our circle has a, um, a radius of zero. Uh, we should calculate how big that circle should be. So let's do some calculations at the top. Let's make um, two uh, constants, one for diameter. That's going to be the oops, diameter. That's the distance from one side of the circle to the other. Now, the width of the screen is from minus 200 to 200, so that's 400 in total. And I'm going to assume that we've always got 32 pixels across by 32 down, so divided by 32. And then the radius is just half of the diameter. Diameter divided by 2. That means when we draw our circle, we can specify the radius, and it should draw it, but it's always drawing it at the, right, at the same point. And I guess that's because our x and y coordinates are always zero. OK, so for each row, we need to set y back to zero at the start of each row. And then after each row, we should increase y by one. And then for each row, x should start back at zero. And after we've drawn one pixel, um, x, oh no, that's not right, is it? 
let's see, at the start of the image, y goes to zero, and at the start of each row, x goes to zero. I think that should be a bit better. Let's try again. Let's stop drawing. So I think this will work to a certain extent. You can see it is moving, um, but um, the x and the y coordinates are moving by one pixel. I want to move them um, in a different place. So uh, let's see. Let's start at y is minus 200. So no, I think it's 200 at the top of the screen. And we'll actually decrease it by the diameter each time. Um, and then x, no, we don't want to start from zero. We want to start from minus 200, the left of the screen, and move across by the diameter instead. Will that work? OK, so yeah, we're kind of working. But the first row is off the screen, so that shouldn't be 200. Maybe it should be 200 minus the diameter. Um, and then here, we just need to remember to lift up the pen before we move to the start position and then put the pen back down again. Oops, I spelled diameter wrong. Here we go. So we're teleporting to the right place. Notice that first blob is um, in the wrong position. So let's say the X position should start at minus 200 plus the radius. Let's try that. Then all we need to do is display the blobs in the right color. Yeah, this is better. You'll also notice it's drawing really slowly, which is going to get irritating watching. So let's just say t.speed 0, so we can draw them a little bit more quickly. Oop, and I lost the thing here, minus 200 plus the radius, just to move it across a little bit. Fab, that looks better to me. Now we need to set the colour. Um, right, so we've set the colour here. We've started filling in, so why isn't that working? Um, right, draw pixel. Hmm. So at this, oh, okay. Yeah, so this is a number. Um, for grayscale, we need to set the amount of red and the amount of green and the amount of blue all to the same number. So it should set the intensity. So we're kind of specifying red, green, and blue using just the same value each time. So now it should display Alan Turing's head. I guess one of the challenges could be to draw a little rainbow first before it draws Alan Turing's head. Um, so whilst it's drawing that, I'll show you how you can generate the image data yourself for one of the challenges. So your challenges are, challenge one, draw a rainbow underneath Alan Turing's head. Challenge number two, um, draw your own um, image using, and then I'll share a link to this link just here. So how does that work? I just searched for Alan's head, um, saved an image, and then using that link, where's it gone? Uh, you can choose an image, you drag and drop the image that you've got, and then um, you, uh, I think it defaults to black and white, so you can change the threshold to see where you get black and where you get white. But I wanted a grayscale image, and then you can copy and paste. So that's Python code already, that's already in a 2D array. I just went for this to put in a text file, copied all of that into um, your own image, and you should be able to load that one separately. Okay, we could do with another challenge on this one. Add some text with um, an inclusive computing message, like anyone can thrive, anyone can succeed in computing, or everyone's welcome, or pride, or something like that. All right, I hope that's been useful. Key points from this are um, how to load data into a 2D array and how to display it. Um, and then also remember, you can find links to um, online remote learning or homework style challenges um, such as the K-Pride um, activity where you can identify different keywords, concepts and practice debugging. Um, and then the uh, extension activity is to do with um, bitmap images um, 
for this week. Hope it's been helpful. Next week, we'll work on full color images rather than grayscale images. Um, so I'll see you then. All the best. Bye bye.